Today is Monday, May 1st. Uh, welcome to the City Council Committee on City Services meeting. Just a quick announcement that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Uh, Laura, would you please call okay. the roll? Sure. Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Gore. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. And as we know, Councillor Perry is absent and excused. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, item three, we have public comment. I do not see any members of the public here, um, so I think we're safe to move on, um, which brings us to item four. Laura, thanks so much for getting the minutes out. Um, and it was in the afternoon, so um, Councilors Labarge and Gore, I just wanted to check to see if you had a chance to, to read through the minutes. Yes, I read yes. it. Okay, great. Um, all right, then uh, we can have a, a motion to act on those. Yes, I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All right. Okay, so motion made by <laughs> Councilor Labard, seconded by Councilor Gore. Um, we're not in person, we can't arm wrestle on it. Um, uh, Laura, would you call the roll on approval of the minutes of April 3rd? Sure. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Gore. Yes. And Councilor Labarge. Yes. Okay. Thank, uh, so that motion passes three to zero, and that brings us to item five, items referred to committee in this, item 5A, items referred to committee. Um, this is a whole slew of reappointments. I'm going to go ahead and um, read them, um, but then we can consider acting on them as a group. Um, so the reappointments are for the Conservation Commission, Kevin Lake uh, for reappointment, to the Disability Commission, Kathy Murray for reappointment, to the Housing Partnership, Edgardo Kensel for reappointment, and Gordon Shaw, also reappointment, Hannah Schaefer for reappointment, and Ace Taylor for reappointment. To the Parks and Recreation Commission, we have Julia Siobhan for reappointment, David Cronin for reappointment, and to the Whiting Street Fund Committee, Joseph Mesterka uh, for reappointment. Um, are there, well, actually, never mind. So um, we do, we could either take them individually or we could consider a motion to consider them as a group if take nobody them. needs. Take them out. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so motion to move them as a group made by Councillor Labarge, seconded by Councillor Gore. And just before we do that, I just wanted to make sure that nobody needs to discuss any of those separately. Okay, I don't either. All right, so Laura, could you do a roll call, please, on the reappointments as a group? Sure. Councillor Gore? Yes. Um, Councillor Labarge? Yes. And Councillor Foster? Yes. Okay, so that passes um, three to zero. And that brings us up to item 5B, which is appointments to various committees, which were referred to city services on April 13th, 2023. And first to my fellow committee members, I just wanted to thank you for um, rolling with the very last minute uh, request for assignment. So I, I ap apologize for my, my mistake there. Um, the first person we had, the first appointment we have is for Angela Gregory to the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Yes. Was that you, Councillor Labarge? Am I yes, it is. Correct? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'll tell you, I'm very impressed with Angela Gregory. And I asked her some questions. The funniest thing is I tried her Thursday. Thank God she emailed me. She was on the train on her way to DC for some training. So she said she'd be back later, probably Saturday evening. I said, take a break, we'll talk and do whatever we have to do on Sunday. But anyways, I'm going to do my best I can here because I did ask her why she wanted to be on Energy and Sustainability Commission. Angela has de dedicated over 20 years of her professional experience in the realm of sustainability. She has worked in various sectors with a sustainability focus from political lobby groups to grassroots community organizations, as well as within the academic and in, an operator and small business owner. <laughs> she has been a resident of Northampton since 2008, and she has sought out meaningful ways to connect with and support her community. She has participated regularly 
on the reuse committee as well as the bike and ped committee and has created three public facing communication materials for the city. One was a personal project that is now a city sanctioned document on the DPW's traffic common site. Two others were translating the extensive planning documents of the Sustainability Northampton Comprehensive Plan and the Affordable and Attainable Housing Plan and summarizing them in a media rich format of thematic areas of public consumption. Angela has been deeply engaged in energy related topics throughout her recent master's in sustainability science with a concentration in urban sustainability as well as the past year as the associate director of the Energy Transition Institute at UMass Amherst where she has been supporting research around energy justice. I also asked her about her expertise of what she could bring to the commission and what possible changes would she like to see happen with the commission if she thought it was needed or any guidance on keeping in the right direction. She felt that her expertise would bring typically spans of energy efficiency as a residential and large building scale to understand how the energy system in Massachusetts functions. Within the theme of sustainability, she holds certificates, certifications of LEED Green Associates, as well as a certificate in climate hazard and green infrastructure planning, as well as a certificate in permaculture design and nature-based solutions. She is very connected to working with professionals as well as academics and very large arena of sustainability and energy and has a strong understanding of the research and legislative landscape in Massachusetts. She also brings emerging research knowledge from the academic realm and the field of energy where policy, energy market economics and community perception and adoption of residential ratepayer programs meet. She also knows how to get things done. This I do believe. I have extensive experience with initiative building and implementation and translation of inf information from technical material to general audiences and am comfortable communicating with the public around the topics of sustainability and energy. Angela feels as a new member of the commission, she would first start by seeking to understand the commission's trajectory and what city policy is guiding that vision, as well as what the main priorities of the commission are for the next few years. She would work to gather additional information or resources, knowledge or social to help inform the process in addition to what knowledge and experience she has and provide guidance through strategy and recommendations. She believes that she can bring an informed perspective that is current as well, excuse me, as willingness to work on behalf of the city and in cooperation with others to find the best path forward and to get the work done. I asked her how important it was to work together as a commission. She felt it is important that the commission has a strong foundation of mutual respect and effective and productive means of communication, as well as a method for project management. She understands this is to be a working commission and beyond the scaffolding of the policy or legislation for it to function effectively. She imagines that each commissioner will provide time outside of meetings to advance the needs of the commission. I believe it is important to have transparency and accountability across the commission as it relates to the work of the commission. And I am to create a positive rapport with my peers as we work together to meet our priorities. She states, I look forward to serving on this commission and hope that we can provide concrete 
and actionable outcomes to address climate action for our city. So that was that. And I would like to make a motion with a positive recommendation for Angela Gregory to be appointed on the Energy and Sustainability Commission to the full city council. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor Lavarge. And Councilor Gregory, it's a little awkward tonight with me chairing. Um, oh, you can't unmute. <laughs> Laura, can you make her a co host? I will second that. Thank you. The long awaited second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion made by Councilor Lafarge for a positive recommendation, seconded by Councilor Gore. Is there any discussion on that motion? Okay, then Laura, can you do a roll call, please? Councilor Lafarge. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. And Councilor Gore. Yes. Okay. A uh, positive recommendation that passes a three to zero. And that brings us up to Eric Winkler of 105 Pine Street, Florence, also for the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Yes, I got a chance to talk with him. Um, so uh, he put a lot in his application, actually. He calls a PhD in environmental chemistry and soil science and years of experience in water and stormwater and wastewater tech. Um, he, he's lived in Northampton since 1987. He spent three decades in energy, uh, energy and environment. Um, he did small scale wastewater management. And in the 2000s, he transferred to um, energy for regional power systems and working at UMass. And now he does uh, energy consulting. He also um, was on the board for a $3 billion energy budget. Um, he has 11 years of uh, working as a professor at UMass. He's retired now and he wants to give back to the community. Um, he worked with Wayne Fiden on wastewater and he has a, a long history with Wayne and Wayne suggested it might be of interest for him to join the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Um, he applied and then the position was filled um, but then uh, a position came open again. He got a call from the mayor's office and they made him aware their position was open again and he applied again. He has the time and the experience to um, dedicate to this commission. Um, most of his life he's been working on uh, sustainability and he has a very detailed knowledge of the power grid. Um, one thing that he would like to learn more about or once he's on the commission is the sustainable Northampton plan. He wants to focus on uh, regeneration. He's uh, interested in community choice aggregation. Um, he worked on community choice aggregation in California. Um, he wants to learn what's being done because we're, we're trying to be net zero in seven years. He said that's not a long time. and. Uh, and um, he wants to be able to move things forward in the commission. Uh, he's, he believes in, in educating the public on the power grid because it's complicated. He explained, he tried to explain a little bit to me that it was complicated and changing infrastructure, he said, is difficult and trying to find the equity in that is what he wants to focus on. Um, he's saying that you know, energy is not going to be cheaper uh, as we go into, you know, trying to be more sustainable. And he wants to talk to people about the economics of, of climate change and, and power generation. And he says power generation will never be less expensive. So he wants to be able to educate the public on that. Um, so yeah, that was and um, I would uh, move to uh, positively recommend him to the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Second it. Okay, so motion made by Councilor Gore, seconded by Councilor Labarge for a positive recommendation. And is there any discussion on this motion? <clears throat> Thanks, Councilor Gore. Um, Laura, would you do a roll call, please? Sure. Councilor Foster. 
Yes. Councillor Gore. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, so that motion passes three to zero. And that brings us up to the appointment of Richard Parrish to the Urban Forestry Commission. Um, and Councillor Perry sends his apologies. He's sick and cannot make the meeting tonight. Um, he was able to give me just a, a real quick um, overview that he um, had talked with Richard Parrish, who's been volunteering actually with Tree Northampton for years um, and is ready to um, help with the urban tree landscape even more by serving on the Urban Forestry Commission. Uh, but he's been involved for quite a while. Um, and so Councillor Perry um, felt good about making a positive recommendation um, for the appointment of Richard Parrish. So um, I guess... As the chair, I can't make that recommendation, but that's Councillor Perry's suggestion. Um, and, and either of you could make a motion. I make the motion. Second. Okay, motion made by Councillor Lavarge, seconded by Councillor Gore. Any discussion on this motion? Okay, Laura, would you do a roll call, please? Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Lavarge. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Uh, so that motion um, passes three to zero. And that brings us up to um, the appointment of Sherry Taylor to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I spoke with Sherry Taylor this morning, actually, um, and we had a great conversation. She's um, lived in Northampton since 2007. Um, she actually owns a number of rental properties. And so while she's never been to the Zoning Board of Appeals herself for her properties, she's familiar uh, with the process and, and her real interest uh, kind of in zoning and planning was peaked years ago um, when she was not able to build a garage on her property because it was too close to the property line. And that's sort of where she she dug into some of the matters of zoning and, and, and how that works. Um, she's been asked to serve um, by another member of the Zoning Board of Appeals um, and uh, has been open to serving for several years and was just waiting for a vacancy. Um, and uh, there is a vacancy now, and she's ready to step forward. Um, and uh, you know, she's she's just loves Northampton and looking forward to um, volunteering in a capacity that can further, um, you know, further the city. Um, so that that's her real interest. Um, and with that, um, I would make a positive uh, recommendation. Um, and yeah, second. Okay. So we'll say I made the motion. Uh, motion made by by me and seconded by Councillor Gore. Um, any discussion on this motion? Okay, Laura, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Councillor Gore. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Okay, so that also passes unanimously, uh, which brings us up to item six, new business. I have uh, two things, but wanted to first open it up Councilor Labarge or Councilor Gore, if you had any new business you wanted to bring up tonight. There was, um, we had been assigned a couple of meetings back to um, look into like public places where like a city council um, meeting could be viewed. Yes. That's yeah. slipped off my radar. I've been <laughs> tracking it for all of these meetings and now it's gone. <laughs> um, should we add that back on for our June meeting? Sure, oh, we could. Would you like to do that or with the, um, it's, I it, I remember now it slightly slipped off my radar as. Um, I don't know if everybody re remembers what they were assigned. I don't know if, if that, you know, it's been a while. I do have those notes, um, but I remember now it sort of became, felt a little less relevant as council opted to continue meeting hybrid rather than um, to meet, we, we were thinking that we may revert to remote or or weren't sure, but with council meeting has been meeting hybrid, then the public has the in-person option at council chambers. Mm -hmm. right, so right. maybe the discussion is if we want to revisit that discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think? Do you want, because um, Councilor Labarge, I think this was at a time that you weren't able to take an assignment. So it was Councilor Perry and Councilor Gore and I were, we're gonna look into other remote participation options for residents um, when we weren't thinking that council chambers, council chambers was an option. Do we want to continue pursuing that or do we want to kind of hold on to that while council makes decisions about um, where and how we'll be meeting moving forward? Yes, I would like to wait on that. Okay. 
How does that sound to you, Councillor Gore? That sounds good. Okay. So we have our assignments, we have the discussion in the back of our minds and we'll revisit um, when it feels needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Council Labarge. Yes, I know one thing, I did bring it up at city council way back about JFK. They have excellent parking there for all residents to park. Okay, and I think you've heard me mention this and it's brighter in there, the lighting is better but it's the parking. We have many residents in the rural areas who do not want to come down by Main Street. And especially during the evenings, they very feel unsafe about it. So that was one thing I had mentioned. Way back, many of us counselors talked about this, mm -hmm. you know, and nothing was never done about it. But we also talked about a rotating basis, some in Northampton and some up at JFK. So that is another big concern here is the parking and coming out of the meetings late and so forth. That may be a council president discussion for the full council meetings. For our committee meetings, we have options. And that was actually something I was going to ask you all. Um, we've been sort of just meeting remotely because that's what we've been doing. Um, and so I, I did wanna ask as a committee um, how we want to continue um, and I'm fine with going month by month, or if we, we want to have a broader discussion about how we'd like to meet as a committee. Yeah, I would like a broader discussion on that because right now through the state house, we can stay at remote mm -hmm. if we all decide on that. So I would like us to look at this further. Okay. Yeah, I think we can look at it further. Okay, so should we... Um... We have been meeting remotely, so why don't we plan to meet remotely in June, but let's put it uh, as an agenda item to discuss how we'd like to, to do it moving forward. Does that work? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So Laura, can you make a note of putting it on the agenda for the sure. a discussion of meeting format moving forward for the June agenda? Sure. Okay. Um, and then two other things, Councilor Gore, you had brought up um, some interest from residents in sort of, we had the, the great update from uh, the Depart the Division of Community Care last month, but then um, a sort of broader update about, um, you know, progress that's being made on some of the other uh, recommendations of the um, Policing Review Commission report. And I realized I did reach out to the mayor's office. Um, I didn't hear back and then uh, haven't followed up yet. So I will follow up on that uh, because that's a discussion that um, I think would be of broad interest. So I'll, I'll follow up on that and see if we can do that. Okay. And Council Labarge, I think I know what you're going to say and I have an update for you, but I might I might not. We, why, don't, why don't you go ahead and, and we'll see. Why don't you tell me what you're thinking? <laughs> Let's see if we're on the same page. I talked to Director Lascalia from DPW on Friday. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Um, she, you know, she's, she's of course willing to come and talk to us. She doesn't feel like she's got a ton of information that she hasn't shared in council and could either share with the full council during the budget discussions or could come meet with us separate depending on the committee's preference. DPW currently has 19 vacancies. Um, it's sort of a, a systemic- me. They yeah. have what, counselor? 19 vacancies. Still have vacancies? Yes. Um, it is, it's a broader issue um, that many city departments are dealing with, but some of the um, the jobs, you know, the vacancies DPW is dealing with are, are ones that are, are very industry-wide of um, drivers with CDLs and some of the, the heavy equipment operators. Um, you know, she's doing her very best to advertise as broadly as possible um, and to bring people in, uh, but some because that job market is so competitive, um, people are are often able to leave for higher paying work. Um, what she's been doing to keep the business of the city going is using contractors as needed um, for really time sensitive work, um, things that can't wait. Um, so it's definitely, it's a challenge for DPW, but just to put Counselor, it in the broader context, it's Counselor, broader. I get a call coming in from Mass General. Okay, we'll put you on mute and we'll return. It's okay. Um, okay, but there's my DPW update. Okay. Um, and I, I do want to pause if we can for a moment to give Council Labarge a chance to state her her preference. Actually, we may have dropped below a quorum anyway, so we might um, 
Hmm. Why don't we recess until Council of Arts is able to come back on? So don't don't go far. Um, but if you want to take a five minute break, go for it. Okay. Council Labarge, we just took a recess um, so that to give you time. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, welcome back. So I, I had just finished, but wanted to give you a chance to um, to respond. You know, and another thing too, Councillor Foster. Stop and think how many people actually attend city service. It's really going to be something big. And then we're looking at coming like we did today. Nobody out there coming in or participating, right? We've had this problem for a long time, a long time on city service. And it's like here, we're traveling out in the rural areas to come down for a meeting for an hour and then coming back. You're looking at amount of gas being taken and just leaving our cars down there and coming to a meeting for an hour. Are are you that's, that's oh, my yeah. feelings toward it? Oh yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll discuss uh, our meeting format in June. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and so yeah, we have the option to continue meeting remotely. Just wanted to uh, have an official committee discussion about it. Um, and then you got my my update on DPW. Um, does that feel like enough or Director Lascalia discussing during the city council budget hearings or, or do you want to invite her in? Okay, I, I have to say I've talked with Donna myself mm -hmm. and that I told Donna one of my residents on Cardinal Way is also an assistant director in another city. Okay, here locally. Same problem. They cannot get positions filled. And Donna told me how she even went and raised the scale of their money. What is going on? Are they I believe it's an industry, it's an industry-wide um, challenge. Um, it's awful, Karen. Yeah. No, I don't think we need to bring her in because okay. that's awful. It's awful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I did want to get you that information and, and yeah. be sure we had that the option. 
Okay. Uh, so just to make sure we put a bow on it, um, I'm going to reach uh, back out to the mayor's office regarding a, a broader update on the Policing Review Commission. And um, Laura, we're going to put um, a, an update from the mayor's office about progress that's been made toward the Policing Review Commission's report. Um, and then Laura in June will also discuss uh, meeting format. And I promise committee members will have more notice on um, appointment assignments for our next meeting as well. That's good. Okay, is there is there any other is there any further business? No. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second it. Okay, motion to adjourn made by Councilor Gore, seconded by Councilor Labarge. Laura, roll call, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. And Councilor Gore. Yes. Okay. Um, motion passes three to zero. We are adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone.